In this video we're going to learn how to solve trig problems within a range and um, they're going to be of this form here where we have a trig function whether that be sine cos or tan of a complex argument equals um, some value and we'll be trying to find all the values of theta where this um, function here equals this value within a given range. When we're solving trig problems in a range, the first thing we need to understand is the trigonometry wheel. To do this, we split an area into four quadrants. And what we do here is we measure um, the angle from this line here. So for instance, from here to here is 90 degrees or pi by two, if we're doing it in radians. From here to here, it's either pi or 180 degrees. From here to here, it's going to be um, three pi by two or 270 degrees. And from here to here, it's going to be two pi or 360 degrees. Now it's important to understand that this is the positive direction why and whereas this is the negative direction so this um, from here to here is pi from here to here it's minus pi now we've split this up and we've got this um, sine um, all tan and cosine here lots of ways of remembering this the order is important some people remember cast um, some people remember things like um, all stations to um, wherever that's appropriate to you you know if it could be Christchurch Cleethorpes or whatever um, some people remember acts some people remember cast and one student once used with me sex and the city to remember which is the one I tend to use but it's important that you just remember um, how these are set out um, within their four quadrants and what that means is that whether it's sine cos or, cos or tan if you use an angle um, from 0 to 90 degrees you're going to get a positive value um, and if it's sine again in fact it doesn't matter if it's sine cos or tan they'll all give a positive value for the answer here whereas from 90 to 180 signs the only one that gives a positive value the other two give negative values and I do urge you to try this for yourselves tans the only one that gives positive values here and cosines the only one that gives positive values here so for instance if we were to do sine of 60 degrees we get this positive value of 0 0.866 and that's where this is 60 degrees now if I make this 60 degrees um, that makes this angle 120 and if we do that one we get 0 0.866 again so we get that positive value same size um, because remember we're keeping this at 60 degrees what about this one here so this is going to be 180 plus 60 240 well hopefully it's no surprise it's still going to be 0 0.866 but here we get a negative value because sine is only positive in these two um, quadrants and finally if we do the angle from here all the way to here which is going to be 360 minus 60 300 degrees we get 0 0.866 again because we kept all these angles the same but we get the negative value Okay, so what are the steps we go through when solving a problem? Well, the first thing we will do is work out the working range. Typically, you're gonna be wanting to find, say, the values between zero and 360, or zero and two pi. But if the argument for our question is different, we use a different range. And I'll show you that um, in our third example. The next thing we want to do is find the inverse trig value. Now, I could be more precise than that and say, I want you to find the inverse trig value of the positive value and again we'll see that in our examples as well the third thing I want to do is find the relevant quadrants so we know whether we want a positive or negative value and we find the two quadrants which give us a positive or negative value for the trig function that we're using the next thing we need to do is to find suitable values for the argument to so find the solutions using our trigonometry wheel um, for us and we'll see how that works as well and then finally we calculate the solutions for x rather than just the argument now sometimes you don't have to go through all of these stages often you don't have to do stage one and stage five um, but it's useful that you do understand all of them okay let's look at two examples for both of these examples we're going to go from the range 0 to 360 so our first one is we want to find the values of x from 0 to 360 
where tan x equals two. And I actually stress it equals positive two. Now here, this is for x and that's fine. We don't have to do stage one because we're only considering x in this question. So all we do is tan to the minus one of two. So here's our wheel. Tan to the minus one of two is 63.4. So that means this angle is 63.4, this angle is 63.4, this angle is 63.4, and this angle is 63.4. Now only two of these quadrants will give a, a value that is positive. And that's where it's going to be all, because they're all positive there, and tan, because we're dealing with tan, and tan is the only one that's positive there. So the two values for us are 63.4 and 180 plus 63.4, which is 243.4. So these are the two values between 0 and 360 degrees, where tan x equals 2. Now for our next basic example, I've just changed the argument. So rather than it being x, it's 2x, but we're still going from 0 to 360 degrees. So step one says we've got to work out the range that we're dealing with. So all we do is we change this so it's the same as this. So I've just multiplied everything by 2. So rather than going from 0 to 360, we're going to go from 0 to 720. So that means we go twice around this wheel. So that's going to give us 2x equals 63.4, 243.4, carrying all the way around, that's 360 plus this, 223.4, and then carrying all the way around, so that's going to be, let's see this, 360, 540, plus the 63.4, 603.4. But that's for 2x, so we're now going to go for our step five and calculate the value we want by dividing by two. And we get x equals these four values. So these are the four values of x where tan x equals positive two. OK, now for a slightly more complicated um, problem. I've changed it to radians. The process is exactly the same. You've got to make sure you calculate it in the right mode. We're going from 0 to 2 pi, but you can see here the angle um, or the argument is slightly more difficult. It's 2x minus pi over 4. And also, this time we've got to equal in a negative value. So the first thing I want to do is change the range. So it's not x, but it's 2x minus 4. So I multiply by 2 first, so we're going from 0 to 2 pi. Then I take pi over 4 from each part here. So 0 take away pi over 4 is minus pi over 4. Obviously, this is 2x minus pi over 4. And this is 4 pi minus pi over 4. So we're going to go over and um, go round twice. OK, so now what we do is um, cos to the minus 1 of the positive value. Because by using the positive value, it always just gives me this angle alpha. Doesn't matter which one I'm doing, even though I'm only interested in the negative, I do the positive value. So cos to the minus 1 of um, 0 0.3, positive 0 0.3 is 1.27. So that means this is 1.27. This is 1.27, this is 1.27, and this is 1.27. I'm only interested in the ones where cosine gives me a negative value. Well, I know they all give me positive values here, and cosine's other positive value is in the one with cosine. So these are the ones where cosine gives a negative value. So I'm going to go round and take these values between here and here that give me... Um, that give me the minus 0 0.3. So the, this is going to be my first one. So that's going to be pi minus 1.27. This is my next one, 2 pi, and pi, sorry, plus 1.27. And then I get here again by going around once, one and a half times, but back a bit. So that's 3 pi minus 1.27, and this will be 3 pi plus 1.27. So these are the solutions for the whole argument. Now I just want to find the value of x. So for each of these, I'm going to add pi over 4 and then divide by 2. So I get x equals these four values here. In the description below, you can find a link to a worksheet that has questions that you can try on your own. I hope you found this video helpful, staying in field with Winfield.